Well, hello again everyone. It's been absolutely flipping freezing here for quite a few days now. And uh, I'm afraid to say I have made a bit of a schoolboy error. In fact, it's safe to say I have been an utter muppet, or if you will, a total spanner. Now, after my recent trip down to Surrey, where I stayed in the pub car park, I did drain down the van on my return. So I drained off the water tank, I drained off the water heater, and I drained off the flush tank of the toilet, which is what I usually do in the winter time. But usually in the coldest weather, I'd bring the van onto the uh, drive in front of the house, plug it into the electric and run a small heater in here in the sort of freezing temperatures. But for various reasons, uh, I did not do that in the recent freezing weather. And unfortunately, it does appear that we have suffered some damage. Now, when I realised how cold and bad things were getting, I did run the van onto the front and plugged it in and got the heat into it again. But unfortunately, uh, I did realise that the pump wasn't running. I obviously did suspect some damage in order to even try it, but if I flick the pump switch, there is that brief... There's something happening there. Um, it briefly makes that light go red, which is the low battery light or effectively high drain on the battery. So there could be sort of like a bit of a short there or something, but I suspect the pump was um, frozen. The pipes to it were a little bit crispy, so um, I did direct the fan heater towards it. Now I did wonder if um, I'd got the pump a little bit too warm and the thermal cutout had operated, which should reset itself, but no, it's several days later, so it definitely should have cooled down. Uh, it's only about 10 degrees in the van and the pump is still not working. And it's only a week and a half now until Christmas and we're away after Christmas and obviously the run up to Christmas is quite busy. So while I'd normally perhaps attempt to repair the pump, I've just ordered a complete new replacement off of eBay. So anyway, the first thing to do really is to take the old pump out. We shouldn't need to drain down because we've drained down already. So there might be a little bit of water escape perhaps, but not much. Now I've already checked and I'm getting 12 volt to the pump when uh, I turn the pump switch on. Obviously I've turned it off now because I'm going to take the pump out, but you can put the multimeter in this uh, chocolate block there and into the uh, sort of positive feed into the pump there. And we do get a nice 12 volt reading across there. So we definitely have power to the pump. The fuse hasn't blown in the Zig unit. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the unions for the pipes and uh, then disconnect the wires. That one's in that little bit of chocolate block, obviously. And then um, this one is just a crimped uh, terminal. So I'll have to cut the wire there. Uh, but I can put the other wire into the other side of the chocolate block. So if I ever need to do it again, I don't have to do that. And then the pump just unscrews through the feet and we can take it out. Now, I'm not seeing any obvious uh, freezing damage on the housing here. It doesn't seem to be split or anything. Uh, this is the old pump and this is the new pump. So they are labelled up slightly differently, but they are both sure flow 7 litre per minute pumps. Um, same spec and everything. So let's drop this one in.
you probably spotted how much water did come out of that pump uh, when I took it out so obviously that was all ice at one stage so definitely is worth draining the pump down separately just need to undo those unions and give the pump a bit of a spark up just to discharge the water out of it that's what I should have done quite a few days ago now you might have noticed there how much extra water came out of those pipes even though I had drained the tank down and I suppose it's obvious really I mean there are pipes that run underneath the floor of the van as well uh, which are obviously below the drain point of the tank because the tank is completely inboard on the floor so um, I guess there's water in those pipes as well um, but they are all flexible hoses so maybe they'll be okay anyway let's turn on the pump just briefly give it a quick flick and see what happens so there you go that pump does appear to be working perfectly satisfactorily i probably will strip down this uh, old pump later just to see if i can fix it and then i can keep it as a spare but learn from my mistakes so you don't have to suffer uh, in this way and uh, if it's going to be a really cold snap make sure you drain down your pump now the shower hose had frozen as well and that of course hangs in a, a big loop like that so there's another tip for you disconnect your shower hose and drain that off too i have now done that and hopefully that's okay but before we go away when the weather's warmed up a little bit i think it's going to get a bit milder this weekend I'm going to put some water in the tank and fire up the pump because I already think I had a little weep somewhere because the pump was firing uh, very occasionally if you left it. So that does indicate there's a little weep somewhere. So I might have something to track down anyway, but I just want to make sure that frost hasn't popped anything else off and made a leak before we go away. But I'm not going to do it now because it's absolutely bitter. I think it's about minus five outside now. So I really don't want to introduce any more water into the system at this stage. So that's where I'm going to leave it. And we'll see you again very soon in the next one.